Hi, my name is Anvita Dikshit, and today we're going to be talking about the social disciplines explained in the theory of yoga. Now, in last week's video, we understood that yoga is not just asanas and pranayam, and that it has eight different specific steps. So, having understood that, I think it makes the most sense to start with step number one and really understand what exactly is the social discipline that yoga theory speaks about. The social discipline is known as yamas in Sanskrit, and there are five different types of social discipline that yoga encourages you to adopt. Now, there's a reason why the social discipline comes before you practice the asanas, because according to the sage Patanjali who wrote all of this theory, he thinks that even before you actually get into the yoga class, you need to have a certain kind of mentality to even begin your practice. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, the first yama that we look at is called ahimsa. Ahimsa literally means non-violence. And I know that usually we think of non-violence as something physical, right? Like if I don't harm someone, then I'm non-violent. But yoga theory takes non-violence to an even higher level. It says that non-violence is actually a more mental construct. So every time you think of you think of harming someone or you think of something negative towards another person or an event or a situation, you're actually being violent towards them mentally. So even before you begin your practice of yoga, you want to start developing a sense of non-violence and the desire to actually not harm anyone mentally as well as then behaviorally and physically. So one way that yoga theory breaks this down is that it encourages you to actually look at other living beings as an extension of yourself. So the minute you think of them as just more parts of you, you will not necessarily want to harm them because they're not separate from you. So while this sounds a little complicated, it's just super basic. Think of everybody and everything around you as an extension of you and try not to have negative thoughts towards them. So that's number one called Ahinsa. Now we come to number two which is literally known as Satya. Now Satya means truth um, and it encourages you to speak the truth in all situations and conditions. Now I know and I understand that we have been conditioned to believe that white lies are okay and telling the, the well lying in some situations is alright. But yoga theory believes that lying in any circumstances is not favorable and it encourages you to speak the truth at every given moment. So what that means is even something as tiny as you cheating in a class test or you doing something very small as just taking somebody else's pen home. is As minor as that may seem, it just indicates that you're willing to do something that's dishonest and you're willing to abide by something that's untrue. So even in those little things, try and exercise a sense of honesty and a sense of truthfulness to the best of your capacity. So that is the principle of Satya. And now we come to the next one which is known as Asteya. Now Asteya literally translates into non-stealing. Again, we think of not stealing as something very physical. We associate stealing with somebody who's like you must be a robber if you're stealing or you must be somebody very um, negative if you're gonna steal. But actually yoga theory believes that stealing again happens at a more mental level as well. So, you know, times when we feel really possessive of other people or we feel really possessive of situations and we think that's mine, what we're actually doing is we're stealing time, attention and also affection from people and situations who don't necessarily want to give it to us. So, stealing isn't just something that you do with objects, you can do that with people's time and with their energy as well. So try and, before you even begin yoga, try and keep yourself away from stealing from other people by making yourself super self-sufficient. So the minute you become self-sufficient enough to not really need anybody else or need anything else, you'll start to not steal from them mentally as well. So that's the concept of asteya. And the fourth type of social discipline is known as brahmacharya. Now I know that with brahmacharya we usually associate with extreme celibacy or extreme abstinence but usually what yoga theory means by celibacy is just not wasting your primal or sexual energy on activities that are not really necessary. So when you think of it this way, you will conserve energy or you will be able to use it in more productive purposes if you don't just use it in wasteful ways. So while yoga theory does not 
is not forcing you to be celibate or abstinent. It is encouraging you to be wise about the way that you spend your energy, whether that's in sports or any other activities that you wish to use it in. For example, even if you look at sports people or athletes, before their matches or before the Olympics especially, athletes are encouraged not to engage in any sexual activities just so that they're able to conserve their energy and use it in their actual sports performance. So in a very similar way, what yoga theory is encouraging you to do is to not be wasteful of the way that you use your energy in. Of course, it's your choice, but just be mindful of the way in which you actually expend that energy. Another point that I want to mention is people believe that being celibate means you don't can't, cannot get married or cannot be in a relationship. A lot of yogis do have relationships and do get married but again they're very mindful of the way in which they cultivate those relationships and they do it in a way that allows them to be their highest self. So that is the concept of Brahmacharya. Now we come to the fifth one which is known as Aparigraha. So Aparigraha comes from a very similar concept of Asteya. They're both kind of sister principles and they believe in the same basic concept. So Aparigraha literally translates into not hoarding. So when I say not hoarding, what I mean is literally not being greedy, not encircling. So you know times when we literally, we want something as our own because we're afraid that it will be taken away from us. That displays a sort of lack of trust in the universe or the provider or the creator or whatever you wish to term it as. Because you think that unless I hoard or unless I keep this thing to myself, somebody or something will come and take it away and then nobody else will be able to take care of me. So that kind of erroneous thinking uh, and not believing in a larger creator universe is what yoga theory is trying to replace. There is something or somebody else that is there to take care of you. I mean, just the fact that you are where you are, the fact that you're able to watch this video, you have internet connection, you probably have a, a house and a shelter and place to sleep in, are already things and ways in which you're being taken care of. And you didn't ask for it, it was given to you. So there are so many things and ways in which the universe, the provider is already taking care of you. So just recognizing those, being more mindful of them and understanding that we always have somebody else that's looking out for us and we don't need to be greedy and hoard and keep things just to ourselves. That now completes the five yamas or social disciplines that yoga theory talks about. So like we've always mentioned, yoga is not just a physical practice, it's extremely spiritual and mental and the more you start understanding these different facets of yoga, the better you can practice it and the better yogi you will become eventually. So I hope this video has been informative for you and that you've been able to understand exactly why you need to be socially disciplined before you begin the practice of asanas and get onto the path of yoga.